I'm Hog, this is the Dice, and why don't we just get right down to it and ask the Dice Gods what I'm going to be reviewing today. Oh no. Oh no. I'd just like to preface all of this. I like Star Wars. I think they're really good movies with a good consistent storyline and really fun characters, but, but I wouldn't consider myself a Star Wars fan. There's actually not many things I'd consider myself a fan of, and Star Wars isn't one of them. Okay, just thought I, I needed to explain that before I uh, move on to what's next. Now, a lot of people have been complaining that The Force Awakens is basically just telling the story of A New Hope all over again. And they're right, it is. I just happen to think that The Force Awakens did it better. <laughs> oh, okay, right? Pitchforks, please, no! No. How did you sharpen a lightsaber? No. Okay. Let me explain before I'm burned for heresy. A rebel slash resistance member gives important plans to a droid. They get attacked by the Empire slash First Order and separated. The droid ends up in the desert and gets captured by a short scavenger to end up in the hands of a young orphan. The orphan leaves the desert planet on the Millennium Falcon, but it turns out that Han Solo owes somebody money. They go to a crazy space bar full of crazy aliens. The female character gets interrogated by the helmeted and cloaked bad guy. The two male characters, in a highly contrived fashion, run into the female character who was captured. And then the mentor figure of the lead character is killed by somebody who they were once very close to. A giant superweapon in space is destroyed by a fleet of ships one of which is piloted by one of the main characters. Sure, there's more similarities if we take the entire original trilogy into account, but that's it in a, a straight comparison between episodes 4 and 7. Not that that's not a lot, because that's a lot. But what's different? Well, for one, episode 7 had a lot of character development. Finn starts off as an indoctrinated soldier of the First Order, only to be disillusioned when he's commanded to attack innocent civilians instead of fighting the vicious resistance that he's probably been taught all his life are the enemy. When he leaves, all he wants is to try and get as far away from the First Order as possible. But then he starts to make real friends for the first time in his life. When one of those friends has their life threatened, he ends up joining the fight against the First Order purely to save that friend. In Episode 4, Luke starts as a whiny brat farmer. He gets into a little bit of trouble with his droids, talks for a while with a mystical old hermit, and decides to remain a whiny brat farmer. Alderaan? I'm not going to Alderaan. Until his aunt and uncle are killed, and he becomes a whiny brat rebel with a magic sword. In episode 7, Rey starts off as a scavenging loner who just wants to stay where she is in fear of missing the family she thinks will return to her. In spite of this fear, she leaves the planet to try and help the Resistance by bringing them BB-8 but then immediately wants to return home. She's captured and discovers her powers
and finally conquers her fear and goes on the quest to find Luke Skywalker. In episode 4, Han is a scoundrel who takes a job to transport a droid for money, agrees to rescue a princess for money. He's rich. 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 Powerful. Listen, if you were to rescue her, the reward would be... What? Well, more wealth than you can imagine. I don't know. I can imagine quite a bit. Leaves just when he would be useful because there's no money in it for him, and then has a change of heart and returns as a hero. In episode 7, Kylo Ren is a conflicted warrior monk. He has turned his back on his parents to follow the ideology of his mentor, and looks to the memory of his grandfather for inspiration. However, he still feels love for his parents. Eventually, he conquers his doubts by killing his father. In episode 4, Darth Vader is a scary buckethead and member of a largely defunct religion. Your sad devotion to that ancient religion has not helped you conjure up the stolen data tapes. He does scary buckethead things. Are giving you clairvoyance enough to find the rebels' hidden fort. I find your lack of faith disturbing. In episode 7, Poe is... also... there. In episode 4, Leia is an awesome rebel leader and does awesome rebel leader things and is basically Countess Markovich in space. But that's not even going into what episode 7 did with Han, Leia and Maz. I think people forget that while the original trilogy had a lot of really great and conflicted characters that had layers and bounced off each other really well, most of that layering and conflict didn't happen until episodes 5 and 6. Even Obi-Wan Kenobi gets more character development in episode 5 than in episode 4, and he's dead in episode 5. The Force Awakens manages to give a lot more depth to a lot more characters than A New Hope in about the same amount of time, and that's really impressive. Not that all of the characters in episode 7 were the most compelling ever written, I, for one, couldn't care less about Snoke. I I have to keep reminding myself that Snoke was there in the movie, and that's hardly the hallmark of an engaging character. And I thought that Captain Phasma was simply a character who Gwendolyn Christie was wasted on. So in terms of character development, the Force Awakens simply did more with what it had than A New Hope did. Speaking of Captain Phasma, that brings me to my next point. Villains. Even though I, even though I already said that Darth Vader gets absolutely no character development in A New Hope, I still think he's a great villain. The next two movies more than make up for his initial lack of depth. And even if they didn't, he's just got such a strong physical presence and that booming James Earl Jones voice that just make for a perfect, scary, larger-than-life villain. Kylo Ren, on the other hand, doesn't have that same commanding presence. He doesn't have that booming voice. What he does have, however, is internal conflict right out of the gate and the ability to violate you in the most intimate fashion imaginable. When Darth Vader comes on screen, he's scary because you immediately know he can kick your ass. He just has to walk into a room and you know this guy can beat seven different kinds of shit out of you. He is physically intimidating. Everything about him is physically scary. Even the way he uses the Force and his interrogation techniques are physically scary. Kylo has neither the physical presence nor the booming voice of his grandfather. He's simply not a physically intimidating person at all. But the instant he made that half-caressing, half-crushing gesture and started pulling detailed information from people's minds against their will was the instant I became afraid of Kylo Ren. I think the main problem people have with Kylo is that they want him to be more like Vader 
but they also want him to be less like Vader at the same time. When people first saw the cloak and helmet, and Kylo holding Vader's mask and talking to it, they were rolling their eyes and, oh, he's just a Vader fanboy. Then when they saw the movie, they were like, he's, not, he's just not as scary as Vader. But the thing is, he is as scary as Vader. Vader couldn't do that horrifying pull stuff out of your brain trick the same way that Kylo Ren can't make you shit your pants by striking a power stance. Vader is physically intimidating. Kylo is psychologically frightening. They're just two very different kinds of scary. And I think people just weren't expecting that difference. However, my one big worry with Kylo is that although he definitely got more character depth in his first movie than Vader did, maybe he got too much too soon. I'm not sure where else there is for Kylo to go, except maybe a redemption arc, and that does feel like it would be retreading too much ground. Then again, they might surprise me and have Kylo go full Game of Thrones in terms of villainy. As for other villains, well, Snoke doesn't have anyone to be compared to in A New Hope, and if we put him against the Emperor in any of the other movies, including the prequels, he just kind of falls flat, and as disappointed as I am to say it, Captain Phasma has about an equal rating to Moff Tarkin on the Dolometer. So in terms of antagonists, the two movies are about the same. In, in terms of protagonists, I guess Luke is okay? Though personally, I've never cared about Luke Skywalker and probably never will. But I think Han and Leia kind of steal the show in terms of heroics. Han overcomes his fundamentally greedy and selfish nature to help save the galaxy, and Leia is simply a stone-cold badass throughout. In The Force Awakens, People have implied that Rey is something of a Mary Sue because of how quickly she starts to master her powers. But as other critics and reviewers have already pointed out, both Anakin and Luke developed their powers in... with roughly the same kind of speed. It was actually to the point where I was seeing it as more of an indication of Rey being a Skywalker than a Mary Sue. Though the one may be a subset of the other. Poe is also there. And as for Finn, honestly, I think he has one of the best heroic journeys in the franchise so far. He overcomes not only decades of indoctrination solely on the strength of his personal morals, but he also overcomes his own very rational and justified fear of the First Order. And those two things happen as separate events within a single movie. I'm sorry, Luke, Plan, Walker, Sky, Weiner. I don't even care enough about the character to make fun of him. Sorry. But I have to stick with The Force Awakens in terms of protagonists. And that finally brings me to writing. Now, I know there's a certain reviewer, who shall remain nameless, that usually judges this on which movie had the most memorable lines. But there's a lot more to good writing than that. Hawk the Slayer had tons of memorable lines, and it was one of the worst shit piles I've ever seen. The room, the room is loaded with memorable lines for the sake of all the gods. That being said, I actually don't remember a single line from The Force Awakens, and that's still a mark against it. On the other hand, if you remove all of the your powers are weak, old man. And all of the, aren't you a little short for a stormtrooper? The dialogue in A New Hope is basically reduced to clunky awkwardness and boring exposition. But while The Force Awakens doesn't have many memorable one-liners or witty quips, the dialogue remains consistently decent throughout, which is not something I can say for A New Hope. So on writing, we again have a tie. 
Now, there's more things to talk about. I haven't really touched much on camera work or direction, but I don't feel there's that much to say. While the two movies used slightly, and I mean very slightly, different styles for both, I think they both had a style that suited them and was executed roughly equally well. And while the scene with Han's ship getting boarded in The Force Awakens wasn't really relevant to the plot, neither was the trash compactor scene in A New Hope. Both movies even had an equally John Williams-y score. On the opposite end of the spectrum, there's stuff I have too much to say about, like the widespread complaint of the Empire repeatedly building a giant weapon. But that's getting its own video. I'm going to reserve my opinion on the merits of repeating the basic storyline for now. It either went like this... It's okay. It's okay. We know how to Star Wars. You're safe. You're going to be safe. Or it went like this. Hey, how do we write this new Star Wars movie? What? Oh, um, just copy one of the good ones. Okay. And we won't know which one it was until episode 8 comes out. All in all, they're both good movies. I just thought that The Force Awakens was better. Alright? Light me up! Alright? Light me up!